Yeah, we got ours on Thursday. This past Thursday? Yeah. Nice. Which was cool. Um, and it was like fast. Yeah. Our the the whole process for us was pretty quick too. It was just like you went down, you gave someone some very basic information. They said get in this line and then you you get it and then they make you wait 15 minutes just to make sure you don't have a, you know, a weird reaction. And then they're like, all right, they basically write a number down on you and say you can leave at this time, but otherwise sit in one of these chairs. Um, and that was that. Um, all right, I'll start. Hello and welcome back to Circus Stories, a circus history, <laughs> a circus history <laughs> podcast. I'm your host, Callie B. And hello, it's me, Mark Renauden. And we're bringing you another eye-opening story from circus history. <gasps> but first, we're going to bring you our circus word of the day. Gotta do it. Um, and Mark, I'll let you guess before I will give you the actual definition. I love guessing. I would be very <laughs> good, if not annoying, on game shows. Um, so today's word is lot lice. Lot lice. I mean, the the the, the simplest one that in my brain first goes to is... It is a particularly rambunctious brand of lice that develops when a group of people, because they're all staying in the same place, right? They're all in the same train car. They're all in the same tent. <laughs> and if one person gets it, all of a sudden you got lot lice because everyone <laughs> on the lot has got it. And it's just so hard to tell where it started or who to get it. So everyone's got when when lot lice shows up, when someone you know, in a lot of my explanations, there's one person going, we got whatever the word is. So in this time, it's we got lot lice. And when that happens, they're like, all right, shut it down. Shut it down. Everyone shut it down. Everyone shampoo. Everybody shampoo. <laughs> Um, and they have to see everybody's shampooing because otherwise you don't know if someone's not. So everyone takes like everyone puts their bathing suits on. They get in a little kiddie <laughs> pool and they sure. guess everyone shampoos it up. Um, so that I mean, that's the obvious choice. So I, I can't imagine it's anything other than what I just said. Sure, sure. Well, it's not that, but it's OK. <laughs> it's a uh, lot less is. Uh, and I got this from uh, Circus and Shide Show. Circus and Shide shows.com yeah say that um, five times fast yeah i cannot um it's people on the show grounds long before the show's performance sometimes early in the morning to watch the tent go up so basically just uh, like people hanging out so watching watching stuff. so if the if the if the circus grounds is the scalp these yes. people are the lot lice yeah, they're hanging out, hanging on. I'm probably a lot like because I'm just photo okay. I'm photographing. Well, that's fine. But I'm accepted because, you know, mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm. I'm I'm circus adjacent. I don't know. <laughs> I'm justifying my I'm justifying oh, my you, presence. You, I'm sure you'd get a pass. <laughs> yeah. You're you are allowed and welcome in that space. Yeah, I, I don't know. If anything, I'm lot lice because I would loudly just be like, "What's going on? What are you guys doing? <laughs> are you hammering that? Is this hard? Is this a show? <laughs> Is this the circus?" So that's lot lice. So today we are gonna do another clown ep, another clown episode. We're talking clowns. Clown ep, clown ep. The people love More it. More clowns. People love clowns. They do. Um, Turns so out. They do. They really do love these clown, the clown topics. I wonder, hey, we are here to give the people what they want. That's our job. That's all we want to do. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to discuss clown college <gasps> and namely Ringling Brothers Clown College. Oh, but there's other clown schools. But Ringling Brothers seems to be the first as far as like advertising schooling that I can tell um but is that and that's in the u.s because i think france has the mind yeah I'm sure, I'm sure that's in the u.s yeah i mean they tout ringling brothers touts like the first of its kind in the world at least when it when it started mm, however okay. you are probably correct in the fact that you know um there's a lot of circus arts schools in france and in, in europe in general that cover um, a plethora of the circus arts, including clowning. And I didn't really dive into the European circus arts schools, but you're right. Like there, there's a lot of European uh, circus schools, and they're like a lot of them are just 
funded like you don't have to pay as a student which is kind of crazy yeah that's that's like a, to think like what is a government funded circus like i know right yeah well because i think um that sasha baron cohen went to a clown college i'm sure he did i mean he would probably be the most famous person i could think of that attended a clown college i don't know of anyone else that did and i'm pretty sure his was in europe that he went to which would make sense because he is a british person i think he is british isn't he i think so i know at least he started in like the uk but i think i think he is this is the teacher of sasha baron cohen and this guy is philip gollier philip gollier gollier and now the Telegraph in the UK is asking me to have a free trial, which I won't do. No, thank you. <laughs> but his teacher, it looks like, was born in 1943. So I don't... Okay. Uh, let's see. Sasha Barry Cohen. I'm going to cut a lot of this out, obviously. Sasha Barry Cohen. Barry Cohen. Where did you go to school, bro? School of big honks. Honk, honk. Uh, honk, honk, you. I really hope that clown schools, like... I don't think this is what's going to happen, but I really want clown schools to have, like, funny names. Because... You know, if I if I was the dean of clown school, I would really want to lean into the silliness, especially (laughs) that there is a academic program that builds and supports clowns. Right. Which I think is inherently silly. The same way in our clown bureaucracy episode, I thought that it was hilarious. (laughs) The clowns had so many rules. Um, And I feel like this just like is an extension of that, like make the the name of the school something funny like lean into the fact that you can you know make anything a joke so there's this article from the guardian in 2016 that um is kind of going over Sasha Baron Cohen's teacher Philip Gollier and his clown school and it's saying that that he is, this is and also Phil Berger's is is quoted in this Dr. Brown oh so i'm not sure if he went there too i'm not sure but <clears throat> uh he is the resident clown expert. What began for Berger's at the school led to Edinburgh Com- Comedy Award in 2012. Maybe he went there also. Interesting. Hmm. He's based. Yeah, he's like the dude who's brought like clowning to Los Angeles in a real way. It says uh, he is, according to Sasha Baron Cohen, is the greatest living teacher of clown in modern theater. Funniest man I've ever met. He runs his own college in France, then in the UK, and it's near Paris for for. 36 years so that's in 2016 so 1980 maybe he started it and it says that you can learn a la carte taking one three-week course at a time and stay up to two years fees are 2,300 pounds a term and there are no auditions because the role of the teacher is to change the person not to judge them Uh. enrollment is enrollment is first come first serve students are all of all ages but mainly young and from Many countries. There are some babies. Yeah, there are some baby clowns. And it's the teacher's job to turn that baby into a clown. (laughs) So there's definitely clown colleges all over the world. But Ringling may have been the first. Again, when it began, it touted that it was the first of its kind in the world. So that that could be true. But again, Circus loves to say (laughs) they're they're the first of everything. I was going to say, that sounds like a PT exaggeration. (laughs) Yeah. So I'll tell you how it started. I would say it's the most well-known in in like pop culture. Like if you say clown college, people associate it with that clown college, like Ringling Brothers Clown College. But there's a lot of different schools. I mean, it's a huge name, right? I mean, yeah. So it was originated in 1968 by Irvin Feld. According to (laughs) clownpedia.com, it was a brainchild of both Irvin Feld and longtime Ringling Clown and front man Bill Ballantine. Irvin Feld at the time had recently purchased the Ringling Brothers Circus. So in 1967, Irvin Feld bought Ringling Brothers from John Ringling North, who had was the owner at the time. So he bought Ringling Brothers from John Ringling North for the sum of eight million dollars. I know, right? In what year? Nineteen sixty-seven. <laughs> Damn. So now Irvin Feld owns Ringling, but at the time there was a shortage of clowns. Well, I mean, there's only one way to fix that. The famed, uh, you know, Ringling Brothers has this illustrious three-ring circus, but they only have fourteen clowns. That's not enough clowns, not for three rings. And, exactly, not for three rings. And the average age of the clowns were over like fifty years old. They were like fifty-six. Grandpa clowns. 
which we need young clowns. We need those baby clowns that Europe's trying to churn out. Yeah. And Feld was like, they're not going to last forever. We need to keep this going. So his idea, along with Bill Ballantine, was to create a school to train a new generation in this, quote, ancient form, ancient art form. <laughs> ancient. Also, like, in the, quote, ringling style of clowning. Yeah. Well, I, that, you know, the, the, the ringling style is interesting because I was thinking as we were talking about this, like, Every clown college must be so wildly different because they are. Is there like I know we talked about like different types of clowns, right? Like there's, you know, like we mm -hmm. kind of have the three stooges breakdown of like these are the three different like base types of clowns. But it's kind of like, you know, I imagine there's so much variation from area to area, especially if you go outside the US. I'm sure that like French clowns are wildly different than American clowns and like. I know that there is some kind of clown consensus, which is a funny thing to say. Um, but like, you got to wonder, like, what is that? What is the consensus that makes it like this is clown staple versus this is a regional clown thing? Like, it seems like, you know, with other areas, I feel like there's way less wiggle room almost, you know, like if you're studying, you know, I don't know, if you want to be an architect, I imagine that like there's not as much of a difference in, in European school to learn to be an architect as in American school. There's probably some, of Like, course. stylistically, yes, but, like, a foundation is a foundation. Exactly. <laughs> like, this is, like, as far as, like, structural engineering, like, that's, there's mm -hmm. no... But with the clown, I imagine there's, like, complete philosophy difference. Mm -hmm. Totally, depending on who your teacher is, mm -hmm. for sure. Well, I'll go into, like, what they teach, um, essentially. Well, it's, also, it's interesting, too, to think, like, so there's no clown school before this, obviously, so were fuckers just what wh where was the consent like where was the clown census you know what i mean like what made a clown a clown was the circus just like you seem clowny like you're in like where were where were they getting them before that's a great that's a great question i mean i think that uh i think it was okay to be in the circus as, as a profession and i think just over time maybe like it wasn't as popular to do that yeah. you know as a profession you know as as time went on and and um Culturally, perhaps that just like in the late 60s, I think this is me speculating the the idea of being a clown maybe wasn't as um, glorified yeah. later on. You know what I mean? So I this introduction of the clown school was like, hey, you could do this as a job and you could make money and like, come on. Yeah. Remember? <laughs> it certainly gives a lot of validity to it, you know? Yes. Like, especially what is arguably the silliest profession on the face of the earth. Um, it's some, it, it all of a sudden is like, there's like an art form to this. A hundred percent. You know, and like, you know, that that's true whether there's a school or not, but it and lends so much credibility to it and where someone might be like yeah that sounds fun but too silly i could never you know all of a sudden there's a school for it well maybe maybe it's legit yeah because they do have like a curriculum and so yeah adding a structure to it does give validity and textbooks yeah there's, yeah there's no textbooks. Clown textbooks which are also just as expensive as any other so off up that hundo 50 but they're so big those textbooks are giant so <laughs> big and it's an inflatable <laughs> book or some something like that but yeah you're right i think it does give like some validity to being a clown and joining this college and some clout to it uh versus just being like join our circus you know yeah it like changes the equivalent to like i'm gonna run away and join the circus to mm -hmm. like I'm going to be professionally trained mm -hmm. to be a performer. Yeah. And also, you know, I'm sure there's people at the time that were like, I have something in me, but I don't know where, how to funnel it. Yeah. What know? do I do with this? Exactly. Like, I want to be, I want to be very silly and I want to wear makeup. Yeah. And I want to, and how, how do I? And who can help me? And here they were. And then a teacher is like, I will show you exactly what to do with <laughs> exactly. your silliness and how to make your silliness come through in your makeup. It's true. So according to Clownpedia, Feld, Irvin Feld also saw the potential, like public relations potential and opportunity in having this mm -hmm. place so that could become like the center of clowning in America, which it eventually did become for a time. 
So in addition, he wanted this to use the school as another way to keep the show more attractive to audiences, keep it more current and um, more current in the public eye and have a place where he can guarantee getting an endless supply of new talent. So like constantly getting new people because let me build a clown. Well, basically. Yeah. So how they would have people apply would be first, they would apply to the school with an extensive written personality profile that gave the directors of the school an opportunity to have like an understanding of one's psychological standing, which, you know, it makes a lot of sense, but I do think it really does gatekeep from the babies, which is a problem <laughs> that Europe doesn't seem to yeah, have. <laughs> they have those baby clowns and they don't care. Which, you know, baby clowns would do very well. They're very cute. They are. Can you imagine a baby with silly wigs I mean, on? Like, well, that sounds fun to me. Babies with wigs is truly the best. The application is like, it's pretty funny. Do you like yucking it up? <laughs> For, I'm going to send it to you in a minute, but it's like, psychology of the person, their interests, their previous experience. Um, and then they would hold in-person auditions at most stops along their route to like drum up interest in the show and then get a range of people from all over the United States. Was it what, wait, when you said on their route, so there are they, they're like, this is like on the like train, the circus train. Yeah. I think they would stop at each like town and huh. then they'd be like we're holding auditions and the auditions would be like how many babies can you juggle well so they'd have like 55 auditions or something a year that's pretty wild they would audition like over 4,000 people a year but only well, it was very prestigious o- only a certain number would get into the actual school harvard yeah i mean it is like the acceptance rate has been compared to that of harvard like only the silliest uh of folk are allowed in this i mean i do like that they do a psychological uh evaluation i feel like that's a good thing that maybe europe's not doing you maybe get a psycho baby clown that you could have avoided (laughs) again like while i think that it's good that there are like stringent ways to make sure that the pe- that the essentially the future employees you're getting are healthy stable people who really want to do this but just the idea that there is a questionnaire that you have to fill out and if you don't answer correctly they're like you're not clown material <laughs> like, right <laughs> it's like what is on there it's like do you think pies are an underused uh <laughs> tool do you like yucking it up what is your shoe size this clown criteria, uh, I'm very interested in. It's like, could I be a clown? I may be. I don't know. I'm going to send you a link. Let me get that clown link. Like it's a, a blog, but it, right, on it, it, will, it shows the application in which you can read. Admissions. If that makes sense. Ringling Rose and Barnum Bailey Clown College hold sessions each year from July through September. If you always dreamed about a career in this age old art, here's the step by step. You have to be sef- 17 years or older, high school graduate and a u.s citizen so you need a high school graduate like graduate so that's... yeah but scroll down and you'll see the actual application oh, oh oh yeah yeah it looks like any other like job paperwork but if you can you zoom might... in and you can see the questions on there um and it's like a regular right, application mother's name high school location uh name and address your three favorite musical groups your stage comic, movie comic, TV comic favorite? It's just like asking, like, what's your sense of humor? Um, what do you like best about traveling and least? What part of the world would you most like to visit? Uh, this is interesting. When did you first think of becoming a circus clown? Why do you want to attend clown college? What does being a clown mean to you? Those are some pretty generic ones. Um what has given you pleasure during the past year? Andy? Yeah, I like those ones. Yeah. Those questions are interesting. What kind of work do you enjoy most? Describe briefly a series of personal situations and how you would handle it. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Right? My most important goals in life. Are you happier when alone or with others? Why? Yeah, there's a <laughs> lot of a lot of interesting questions out yeah. here. It's it's very uh, what do I want to say? Not intense, but intensive, I guess. Yeah. Um, and well, and there's also a lot of questions that like you you know like some of them like what type of like things do you find funny? You know, like well, who's your favorite performer? That that all that kind of stuff tracks because they're trying to get like okay, what what do you think particularly is funny? What might you emulate a little bit? You know, questions like that make sense, and then you go down and you see more, and you're like, 
huh the most important goals like that that is an interesting one to see but i guess if you're really trying to weed through and get the best of your clowns it probably not only the best clowns but and this is something that i think is true of like any job that you're applying for it's like there is a degree of like do you seem like someone we want to hang around with right for you know <laughs> ever <laughs> and then it's like which drugs have you used check <laughs> yeah like the cool ones or the ones we got to worry about and there's and it's like every fucking drug <laughs> it's like uh what okay cool. yeah you're like are these are these good clown drugs or this like you're gonna right. be a scary clown uh, drug? It's wild. So it's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty intense. There's also some interesting clown photos on the left hand side of this. So that's that's the application. So if you're accepted based on your application, then you then you have to audition, and then once you're accepted, then then you're in. Tuition's free, though. Students are responsible for their own room and board. Tuition's free. Yes, for the courses, but you have to pay for your like lodging. So if you figure that out, like if you look, well, wait, is this, is this school on the train? No. So it is in a physical location. Yeah, it's in, it's in uh, Venice, Florida, or it was. Oh, okay. So if you're a Florida local, you could just like stay at home and then go. Yeah, if you lived in that town. Yeah, for sure. That's pretty sweet. I wonder if they, they picked that place because there's like, there's a lot of silly people here. I think that's probably where their winter quarters may have been, but I'm not sure. Uh, okay. But I'm not positive. I think so. Though. You know, free free schooling essentially is pretty sweet. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I, I know that like, you know, because like if you could get if you could do this and do OK and then get on like a decent circus, it's like that's like kind of like a decent way to be like, well, you know, I can do this. I don't have to like if I don't have any money but I like to, I want to perform like this is, that's like a totally decent option. You know what I mean? Like uh, assuming you live in the area, because obviously moving and paying for room and board somewhere is expensive, but like as far as school goes, this is probably the cheapest like college (laughs) uh, education you could get. Right. I mean, I think it's in its off season because it's, it says each yearly session was held in the fall. The number of students admitted to any yearly session varied, but it ranged from 30 to 50. Oh, wow. But they would audition like over like 4,000 people or something. Yeah, because that's a pretty small class. Yes, because they would go to like each town and audition like a, a handful of people, like 60 plus people, but they would do mm-hmm. that in every stop. Yeah. So vast majority of the you know, the students admitted were men. The ratio of men to women in the cal- clown college classes, it was roughly eight to one. Wow. Eight to one, you know, eight, obviously men to women. Uh, yeah, why is that? Because that, that is, now, now that you point that out, like, I feel like every image we've got of a clown has been a man. Yeah, yeah, there's not a lot of female clowns. I mean, there's there are a decent amount, but there it, it's overwhelmingly more men. There's not a lot of females in circus in general unless I mean, we'll discuss that in a whole other episode of women in circus. It's just tough. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's just like another, uh, you know, a, yeah. a, a much deeper conversation, because that is an interesting thing that I didn't really. And, and, you know, I think a big part of not thinking about that has been the makeup, because when you put on all this makeup and stuff, there's a little bit of like. I don't know if it's just your brain. It doesn't immediately think, oh, dude, it's like, oh, clown. I mean, it's like comedy. You know, it's like girls aren't funny. Shut up. (laughs) Yeah, that's a whole nother gross, dumb, stupid thing. But I mean, that's like the through line. I feel like that's been told to women all forever. And I'm sure that bleeds into clowning. Yeah, it's probably just generic um, misogyny. Yeah, of course. Like everything. Yeah. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Like all the things. Um, Mm hmm. Uh, so the students, if accepted, they have to pay the room and board as well as incidental expenses. They got to rent their own clown shoes. Right. But a graduate from the school, when they finish their term, they will graduate with a, what's quote, quote, an agent suit is what Clownpedia calls it, which huh? is a specific <laughs> clown costume. So you will leave with like your clown persona. So you will have... Your clown costume, your wig, your clown shoes, your complete makeup kit. So if you like rented some of this stuff before, it, once you graduate, it becomes yours. The idea is like they are going to refine your, you're going to come out a full clown. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're going to have a persona and a costume mm-hmm. and you're going to be ready to go on any show. You're going to be ready to rock as the clown that you are. Again, like I said, they tout that they teach the ringling style of clowning. Yeah. What 
is the ringling style? <laughs> it's the American type of clown performance. So like cowboy clowns? So <laughs> with uh, an accent toward broad and slapstick type humor ah, as okay. opposed to European approach, which was typically more subtle. No subtlety in the U.S. We want big. We want fireworks. We want gravy. Yeah. <laughs> we want to make it indulgent. Yeah, we're big. We're goofy. We're not subtle. Stuff your mouth full of this great comedy. You know, we're obvious, I guess. Yeah, we're very obvious. Because of the three ring configuration of the Ringling Show, the bigger arenas, they needed to present like a bigger show, a bigger performance. Um, mm -hmm. in the Always bigger in the U.S., the audiences were larger. The patrons sometimes sat in balconies or super far away. So the clowns on a ringling show had to have bigger hair. Yeah, well, center their performance around the fact that the audiences were so big. So their makeup had to be seen from a distance. Their props and their physical movements had to be very large. Their gags, all their everything had to just be like very over the top and so that's all part of that ringling style well, that goes into too i mean when we talked about the clowns before like sometimes they're like really wild startling makeup makeup that might even be scary to some people it's like if you're watching that from a hundred feet away it might not look so scary it might just actually register to your eyes right like, but in you're in the front row it will be scary <laughs> Then you're like, oh, wow, his eyes are yeah. weird looking. Like, there's no eyebrows here. <laughs> like, yeah, yowza. So, but the idea is that no matter where you're seated as a patron, yeah, it, it, it'll read, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So that's their hope, and that's how they teach the clowns. You know, I imagine, like, you, say you watch, like, Looney Tunes or something, and there's, like, a cartoon clown on it, or just, like, any kind of cartoon or something where you might see a clown. I feel like if you look at like a drawing of a clown, it's way less scary. I don't, I don't, I mean, I'm, I would have to talk to someone who has a fear of clowns, but like it's generally not as like frightening as if you see like a person with the makeup. And I bet you that if you're way in the back, that's kind of what your brain is taking in. It's like, it's this more like, you're just seeing like the key features. You just say, okay, his mouth is very red. Like there's those big, easy to tell nose. His eyebrows look silly. His hair is big. Great. Um, but then, you know, the closer you get, you're kind of like, oh, well, actually, well, it's interesting because <laughs> how they weird. There's some uh, instructors that and there's a lot of YouTube videos that I watched and we'll talk about it. And they touch on the fact that they're like a lot of people make their faces really over the top and you really don't need to do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, you know, I understand that the ringling style, it seems that, yes, your makeup needs to be. Uh, visible, but it's more like your costume needs to be big. So your makeup may That's not the be better to, move. like your makeup. And we'll talk about it needs to be um, centered around your facial features. That's what it, mm -hmm. that's what it needs to be played up upon. It doesn't have to be a giant red mouth. It needs to accentuate your face. And that's what they teach you. Yeah. Help you use your natural tools and help people see your expressions. Right. Cause so much of that kind of performance is like, really raw like emotive right like if you have a good clown face based on your facial features it doesn't have to be a giant red mouth it does you know you don't have to yeah. have that people will see it like if you got good eyebrows we're just gonna make them like darker. exactly so and with like a paler face to yeah contrast. you don't have to like, have a giant everything your movements should read you know your actions should should carry also all of those things combined it should be like a cohesive comprehensive thing and that's ideally what they should be teaching and you know it, it makes me wonder like how much of a uh overlap to something like opera is there because like in a lot of older operas they had like really you know you'll you'll see like face face paint and and like large hair i mean hell like even like uh, the kabuki theater mm -hmm. the, like there's a it really intense makeup yeah. and i wonder obviously the tone is much different right but i do wonder how much of that is for the same reason of just like we want to accentuate their their expression mm -hmm. because there's so many people that are going to be really far away right they will miss a lot of the nuance of the performance Unless it's highlighted somehow. Right. Yeah, that's probably very true. It's funny. So I was watching all these videos uh, multiple times because I retain very little sometimes. Um, and so Nick was like, do these clowns not talk? <laughs> and, I <was> like, <laughs> and I was like, well, I, 
usually they don't talk. You know, clowns usually don't talk. Yeah, it's a lot more physical, right? Because it's all, you know, essentially based on pantomime from a long time ago. Plus then every, uh, they would all have to have microphones and like that's expensive. And if if you've seen like a clown perform, I mean, it's all physical comedy. That's why it's good. Every once in a while, they'll say like one word and that's the punchline where it's like they're waiting on the other clown and they're like, go (laughs) or like stop you know (laughs) it's usually that yeah whatever they can yell from where they are exactly whatever they can yell well because also putting microphones on them is like you know there's a lot of seltzer and pie stuff that go flying and microphones are expensive well and they're rolling around you're just gonna hear this like (laughs) but yeah so the idea is everything is big so it can be like workable for the three ring configuration for an American type circus. So that if they are in a ringling show or any other American circus show, this clown can work in any other American circus atmosphere, basically. So, um, some alum of, uh, the, the clown college are Bill Irwin, which is a famous clown. Okay. Steve-O of Jackass fame of, of Jackass fame. <laughs> that that kind of makes sense. Uh and Leslie Nielsen, which I thought was was interesting. Leslie Nielsen, really? Mhm. Yeah. Huh. And then some uh, instructors are Lou Jacobs who's a super famous clown and he actually has a has a postage stamp. Barry Lubin who is uh, our grandma clown. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one I saw as a kid. And then Frosty Little who's super famous as well. So those were co- a few instructors that were teachers at the clown college. So as I mentioned, uh, I did a lot of research, you know, reading articles, but also watching YouTube videos. Cause I was like, there's gotta be, <laughs> there's gotta be clown college videos, right? Oh, sure. And so, um, there was a bunch of specials that I watched from the eighties, actually like a lot. There's like three from the 1980s and they're really cool. So the director of the clown college, Steve Smith at the time, Steve T.J. Tad or Smith was the director of Clown College. And I, I don't think he said this, but he may have what someone in the, one of the specials was like, we turn clowns into jugglers. We don't turn jugglers into clowns like we refine their skills like we're not. Yeah, that makes I mean, well, it's also like not to not to knock juggling, but like comedic timing is not always something that can be taught, you know? It's like some of it just has to be this like instinctual feeling. And I mean, you can it can be honed. Uh, it can be brought out of someone who might not have normally had it. But I do think that with comedy, there is a certain um, area where you just can't get past it if you kind of don't have it. Whereas like juggling is a skill that anyone can learn. It's a physical thing that you can teach your body. But humor is like it's i i don't know it's different i i don't know and and interestingly enough i'm not sure if there's anything else well i suppose it's kind of the same as like in sports yeah you can learn how to play a sport but at a certain point you only have so much physical aptitude as an individual and and you might know how to play the sport really well and be really smart about it and this is the same as comedy they're like comedy nerds who know a lot about comedy and all i this know kind of stuff, some of like, them that you're just like wow you know so much shit but you're not but you just it's not for you yeah you're you know? not mm-hmm and yeah, I, and I suppose that's kind of true with every, with anything. Like you can dabble in it, but at a certain point, there's only so much that you have as natural talent or aptitude towards this thing, and you can only go so far with it if you don't have. Yeah. It. So the idea of the clown college was exactly what you're saying: is like this person has natural. So they have the thing. They have this raw, yeah. raw Whatever sparkle. this dumb X factor is that Hollywood wants you to have. Yeah. And as far as clown college is concerned, like they they're looking for someone that has like this magic inside them, you know? Well, it's like a, like a Chris Farley thing. It's like you can't explain exactly what it is about him when he starts doing his silly nonsense. But you just love to watch. it, And they just have like a glow. And they also like they have like this childlike imagination that makes people laugh and like a wholesomeness almost you know Mm -hmm. um because we've talked about this before where it's like the clown has like a clown is like on they are in the santa costume quote unquote 
all the time. No cursing, yeah. no spitting. I, I mean, I don't, I, I'm assuming they don't spit, but you know what well, I mean? Well, yeah, like, yeah. There's a certain level of like cleanliness. You know, it's like they're not smoking. They're not drinking. Yes, they are. They're around children. They're a role model for the show and for clowns and for, I mean, it's like yeah. they are on. Sure. Yeah, in a huge way. Well, and, and not only that, but like there's a persona, like I've done like dinner theater crap, you know, like where I am in character. And they're going around and we have to like keep this live show going while people are in and intermingling and stuff. And the whole time it's happening, you are in character. You're always in character. And granted, the thing I was doing was like a comedy. So he could be mm-hmm. kind of silly and like mm-hmm. be a character. But like this is like that taken to like a whole nother level where you're not always going to be talking. You have to constantly be coming up with silly over the top nonsense to be doing basically all the time so it's like also physically exhausting because you're not not only are you on your feet for however long the show is all day but you're doing these like you're doing pratfalls and you're doing like little stunts and junk like it, it it is a lot to do and it's not the kind of thing that you can just like have the clown just like hang out in the wing it's like yeah if they're totally. on they're on but they love it so so the you know the directors and the teachers and all the people at the clown college they look for like the magic of being a child, the imagination, the laughter that we all hold on to as kids like that. You, you want to find that and like rekindle that. So they're looking for that in the people that they are auditioning. And then the technical skills is what they aim to teach. So but the true heart of the clown is what they're auditioning. So in one video from 1986 about how to be a clown, um, the director, Steve Smith, says that a clown needs to have, quote, the heart of the heart the size of Alaska and share it with everyone. He needs to have fun, but always remember to take their silliness very seriously. <laughs> and most importantly, magic. You must believe, must believe in what they are doing and make others believe. End quote. So those are and those seem to be like the tenants. Yeah. Like it's like a big heart taking your silliness seriously and also like making others believe all the time. So they would audition annually. And then again, like I said, accept only a handful into the college, the choice clowns that went through the whole course and graduated from those that graduated, a select handful would then be offered a coveted contract with Ringling brothers for the following season. So they would be like, Oh, you can be on for the next season. I mean, that's pretty huge. That's, you know, getting a job right out of college, which is tough to do. Yeah. And so according to there was an article that I read where they were interviewing Steve-O, who graduated in 1997. So that was like during the Jackass era, right? Like he did he because I know that after Jackass, he kind of like cleaned himself up and everything. So I was kind of curious, like if he did the college after Jackass or before or during. It sounds like right before, uh, but that was like the last year of Ringling. So yeah, it seems that way. He's joined it because he was already doing stunts and he thought it would behoove him to like beef up his resume as a stunt man. Sure. But he did get in. He says that the acceptance rate was harder than Harvard because it would be like 60 clowns would audition at a time and mm-hmm. they'd be holding like 55 auditions a year. So that's like a fuck ton of people. It's almost like 4,000 people. And then they'd only get like 30 to 50, you know, a a college season or a college term or whatever. Well, so the college season is like overall, it's, you know, normal college, four years or whatever. This is way shorter than that, but also way less people. It's like their off season. Yeah. Yeah. Can we train you in time for our new season to begin? Yeah. It's like they're basically a fall break before their, their new season. It was interesting. There was a decent amount of press about the clown college in the 1980s. I noticed like there was a special that I saw in 1982 on CBS about how to get like chronicling the clown college. And then the other one, uh, 1986, that was put out by Ringling Brothers titled How to Be a Clown. And it was like step by step revealing like the ins and outs of clown college. And then another one, 1988 a Ringling Brothers clown alumni special celebrating 20 years of the clown college, which was like a very elaborate TV special featuring over 500 clown alumni from Ringling Brothers clown college. And it was hosted by Dick Van Dyke and that aired February 17th, 1988. Um, And that was cute. It was like 
um, a live stage performance, but it was filmed. And then they would cut in rehearsal parts. So showing how they were doing these bits. Okay. Kind of like almost auditioning the school to people like this is what it's like. Yeah. So if you are into yeah, this, this is how we this is how we learned this bit. And then they would show the bit. That's pretty cool. So it would be like, this is how we learned this stuff. It was it was cute. Um, so uh, I thought that was all interesting. I have I, I have a link to one of the the 1986 one Ooh. i'll show you it, it's there it's long it's like an hour so you can <laughs> kind of like buzz, buzz skip through on it. through but i'll post it in our show notes for those that want to watch it because it's inter it's very um it's just very informative as far as like what went on in the clown college well one thing i think that's interesting about like for example steve-o taking going to clown college which is it's something that i feel like if you are just looking at a clown through the lens of like you know big makeup silly kind of almost wholesome humor which jackass is anything but wholesome humor sure. right it's yeah. like it, it, it's like how much can we put like awkwardness and like men uh, doing stupid things and getting hurt on display in a way or like playing pranks on each other like it's almost like it's kind of like teenager like mean humor done at the highest level right mm -hmm. but the thing that's interesting to me about him like getting in and doing maybe probably even well there is like something that i found out more from like being almost adjacent to like the los angeles clown scene and knowing people who do that and finding out that that angle of clown, which i'm sure it's not the same as circus clown but there's like a probably I, I bet you there's a core of it which what I've heard from people doing it is it's a lot about just like trying to remove any bit of like um, self-consciousness from the raw performance of it and like getting so into character that you are not concerned about how stupid you might look, how silly you might feel, how this, how that or the other. It's like you are on the stage to do this and you need to be fully authentic. Like that's a big thing about the right, modern right. movement at least. And like, then you think about someone like Steve-O who's like, he was like in very extreme scenarios that a lot of people honestly would be very afraid to be in. Um, I mean, we don't know what their safety precautions were, if any, but like, these are the kind of things that like, you need to just like, this is like you being able to, to be in this environment and like put on a show essentially. And so you think about things like him or like, you know, Sasha Baron Cohen, who a lot of his humor was like being in real scenarios with real people and making an absolute fool of himself. I mean, like he's ran through like a whole hotel naked or whatever. You need to like have no shame at all. Like that's like a tool to be used as a clown potentially. Yeah. Because sometimes, like, you're the butt of the joke. Like, that's – and that's, like, you're doing that on purpose. All so the you time. can't yeah. have this kind of, like, shame thing being like, oh, what will people think of me? It's like, no, no, this is for for the laughs. Like, this is – I'm doing whatever I can for humor. So it's like – it might not be obvious at face value where the, you know, crossover is. But at the core of it, I think that's a lot of it. It's like, I'm here to make people laugh. And at, if it's at my expense – fine it doesn't matter well and they that say is... that in one of these specials where it's like and i've said this too it's like clowns will do anything for a laugh they'll do anything and that's like that's what a clown is it's like they want a laugh from you they will do yeah. anything and i guess you know sasha baron cohen and steve-o i think both of those people are good examples of that it was like they don't fucking care they'll, they'll do, do what, whatever they will do whatever it yeah. is and that's i guess a true clown it's just like Whatever it takes, I will do it mm -hmm. because if you're laughing, that's that's like fuel for me. Yeah. And it's it's like it makes a ton of sense, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you are taking clowning seriously, then you don't care what the as long as as, as long as you by the end of it are going to be OK. And so is the person you're trying to make laugh, mm -hmm. you're going to you're going to do it. Right. I mean, Eric Andre, I think, is the most like current example of someone i think he just had like some like essentially like jackass style movie have you watched it it's very funny i haven't seen it yet it's very but funny. he he I, I mean his show is great um and so i would imagine this is very funny too but like that's i guess the current example for anyone of just like someone who's just like i don't care how ridiculous this makes me look at all mm -hmm. i'm willing to do whatever in public if people get confrontational or grow like whatever it is i am willing to endure that for the bit which is like 
a pretty high level of commitment to comedy, which you got to just at the very least respect. I agree. So um, in that 1986 special put out by Ringling Brothers and Feld Entertainment, it's like a six part thing of how to be a clown. So they go over clown skills, clown gags, clown makeup, clown costume or costume design rather. So I'm going to touch on a couple of those things that they teach. So the clown skills, they say like, you know, we refine your clown skills once you're accepted, because again, if you are accepted, you basically have like the core of being a clown. And if you're at this college, we're here to refine all of these parts and we're going to mold you into a clown. And then when at the d- end of this, you will be a clown. You are our diamond in the rough and we are going to exactly mold you into a perfect ring for a lovely lady. Exactly. So they will work on juggling. Like they show examples of how to start juggling. Like they suggest starting with fabrics. But it was interesting because that people juggle and they'll throw it up and down and try to catch it. Or at least I would prior to this. But it's like you're supposed to throw the item up and then catch it, like throw it diagonally. So if you're going to throw it with your right hand, the point that you want to throw it to is like a diagonal line left so that. Yeah, you got to get that rainbow arc. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And that's the idea is that it's going to be you're going to throw with your right hand and then aim to arc towards your left. I'm, this is so hard to mm-hmm. say <laughs> with no visual. Yeah, very hard to describe. Yeah, with no visual. But And then same with the left if you're going to arc towards the right and then you'll eventually learn how to juggle. I fucking didn't, but um, I'm sure... Start, it's hard. I'm sure learning with fabrics is... You have a lot more time as the items are falling because oh, yeah. they fall. Flutters and junk. Exactly. So they'll teach juggling. They teach um, stilt walking, which is... A clutch move so they'll start them on shorter stilts and then get longer but they'll start them on like safety ropes also so they'll be walking on like you know safety cables and then eventually they'll get comfortable get your balance i mean you start with training wheels before you ride a bike i mean you know once they get comfortable with the weight of the stilts and the confidence then they're okay like the confidence is the most important thing walking on stilts is like you have to be of course comfortable and and be you know be able to carry the weight of the stilts and the balance but the confidence is huge like you have to be like don't worry about the people below you just go which is a very brave statement <laughs> this is like i mean it well it, it's similar to a bike too because like if you push the bike forward and are confidently moving forward it's going to keep you going but if you start to worry and slow down yeah you wobble that's when you might after start yeah exactly so totally and then they'll teach unicycle cycling <laughs> unicycling sure yeah <laughs> but also they'll just teach how to move like a clown so like the Mm -hmm. big movements everything is big yeah so you have to walk like a clown is large but everything is big again so that it reads to the whole audience you will smile very big but also like move your hands so that you're making a smile motion or um, you'll jump up and down or you'll hug yourself like that shows happiness as opposed to just smiling yeah if you're sad you'll crouch down and like crunch down or like you'll make like a cry cry face and like rub your eyes like those simple things to just so that it reads i mean it's the theater equivalent of projecting you know it's like you need you are performing and primarily what you're doing is to entertain the people around you and if they can't tell what you're doing then it's hard to entertain them so yeah so they just work on those simple things balloon animals it's like it was so hard to listen I was like, I have to fast forward through this because it was like a lot of rubber. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I yeah, can't. yeah, rubber pushing against rubber. Um, but it was interesting. So I'll I'll leave that link to this whole special though because it's pretty cool. And then they discussed some clown gags. So uh, working with another clown or by yourself, basically just building skits to use in the future, but focusing on the physical comedy and falling properly. You got a pratfall, which is which is hard to mm-hmm. do. Yeah. So they had these instructors in this special, like Lou Jacobs was in there and also Frosty Little, um, just showing them how to fall correctly. But also um, with a partner, they're working with fellow clown college students and mm-hmm. 
there's like a variety of slaps that they would do because a lot of hit there's a lot of hitting i guess in, in clown. that's a huge part of it i mean look at the three stooges it's like all physical comedy uh, pretty yeah much. i didn't realize how much sm- smacking there was but there's a lot there's a lot of smack slapping is is, is a funny <laughs> yeah so <laughs> getting getting slapped is often funny um so there's like a basic slap so the person receiving the slap is supposed to like make the clap noise yeah and then as you turn your head right. there's a whole so they had like the basic slap where the person receiving the slap spins away and falls. And then there's mm-hmm. the haymaker, which again, you make the slap noise if you're receiving. And then the haymaker, once you get slapped, you spin all the way around like 360 a couple times. And then the straight shot slap, whereas once you receive the slap, you fall straight back, like almost like a trust fall. You just like fall straight back. So- and and it really is like a skill to know how to... It- Honestly, this is reminding me a lot of like professional wrestling, right? Where like mm-hmm. you are coordinating with someone else to do these like physical stunts and make them look as like genuine as possible. And like I remember when I was a kid and I was taking like acting classes, I had a buddy um, who he was so good at pratfall and, and, and like I, no one like taught him. He just like figured it out and like it would look like he was hitting the ground hard. And like it would make the noise, but he was just fine. Like he just That's like wild. knew how to do it. And like a part of that, honestly, is like trust and relaxing your body. Because if you tense, it's right way easier to hurt yourself. And so, again, it's the same thing with the stilts. It's like you have to have the confidence and trust that you know what you're doing. Because if you tense yourself up, you could actually hurt yourself. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. But if you're if you're, you know, smooth about it, you will you can make a fall that looks like wow that guy really fell down but he's fine wow yeah damn i i just it, the amount of falling in this special seemed just so painful to me because they had no pads they were just falling they were- no no it's like it's straight up falling it was the same thing with my friend he would just like he would just fall backward and it would be the kind of like fall where like you know he slowly falls down and like and he kind of like bounces almost uh, like like that that's how like heavy of a fall yeah. it looks like but there's a way to do it where it just doesn't really like you 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 might get a little bit of a thud, but it's not like it doesn't hurt the way it looks like it would. Yeah, hurt. the straight shot slap where they just fall straight back. I'm like, what the what? It's almost like you freeze in place and slow mo. And like, they just so yeah, they would just fall yeah, straight like, back. And your feet kind of pop up yeah. a little bit. It's like, and I think I think it's the same type of idea as kind of like the army roll from highest places. You keep your momentum going. I think it has something to do with that. Which is why you can't make yourself be rigid. You have to be loose Loose. and just like let the momentum flow through you. I think it's something like that. Again, I was always too afraid to to commit and try it in a real way. Um, So I could I never could do it. But I was I just remember being a kid and being like, how the heck does he do this? So within the special, they uh, featured Lou Jacobs, again, the super famous clown. And I will show you his picture so you know Uh, who I'm talking about. Please. This is a picture of him earlier like he's older in these specials that i'm watching but this is like a this is like a classic picture of him (laughs) it's the least fashionable clown i think Um, i could possibly imagine he's just wearing a white undershirt and that's it (laughs) he's known for a very elongated uh head because that top part is like a skull cap that he's made um so it looks like his head's taller and mm-hmm. then he has like really long eyebrows and then he's got like a Bert and Ernie head. Mm-hmm, exactly. So in the special, though, he's just showing the clown school how to do like a solo act. He would he's really famous for this act that he would do with his dog. Already. I like it. Yeah, he would. I'll send it to you. It's pretty cute. But he would do this act where he would. His dog was dressed like a bunny and the dog would just like walk around and he would look like he couldn't see the dog and have like a fake gun. Like he was hunting him. It was kind of like an Elmer Fudd kind of thing, but it was he was silent the whole time. And first, you know, it was like a two minute skit, but it was very funny. And it was like kind of a a class in like how you could keep a bit Mm -hmm. going and be funny the whole time, but just by your facial expressions and just their movements and keep people enthralled by simple things. It's like a very impressive skill because like, you know. It's one thing to like silently do something kind of silly and make someone laugh once. But like you said, to hold that same thing and expand on it for two minutes or whatever, how long the bit is, it's like you, you if you're not ready for that, you suddenly become acutely aware of how long two minutes can feel because 
uh, it's a lot and you really got to commit and you can't back down you got to go full on because if you half ass stuff like that i mean people can tell so that link will go to a, a blog but on the on the blog you can <gasps> see the video look at that little dog <laughs> with such little feet so he would do skits with that dog oh my god that um the hunting skit was very famous but also he would do stuff like dress the dog up like a like a tiger and do those things like after the tiger act he would come out and the dog was like a tiger you know like uh spoofing the, the previous act like clown like clowns often do um jacobs lou jacobs was famous for his clown car gag like he created in the 1940s a mini mechanical car like the clown car like he was the first to kind of to do that and it, he oh wow introduced the fireman skit he had like a a big like he was well known for his oversized props he had like this huge cigar that would puff out smoke but the cigar was like five feet long that he would, <laughs> he would carry and and you know inhale it and then it would puff out smoke mm-hmm. like he was just such an innovator in clowning and super celebrated i mean it does seem like he is very looney tunes-esque mm-hmm. yeah so you can see how old he is in that video <gasps> and the dog is standing up yeah uh, his little hands and in the special all the the students just touch on and instructors touch on how influential a teacher he was for all the clowns um and the only clown to have a postage stamp so we'll just de- we'll definitely cover, good. cover him in a whole episode because he's you gotta be legit to get a postage stamp for context i'm pretty sure malcolm x has a postage stamp oh, so see? There you, you, go. you only only cream of the crop people get exactly. on here so if a clown got it mm. That got to be a real good clown <laughs> yeah, to, you know? to get a stamp. <laughs> yeah, look at the, and he's not you know, just anybody has a stamp. Only the best clowns that work with little dogs. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a very cute dog. <laughs> yeah. So then they review the clowning basics, uh, basically in, in the clown college, like clown gags, clown stops. They talk about boss clowns, props, skills, of course, as I mentioned, and physical physical stunts. Um, they review uh, costume design, which I thought this was really interesting because I just assumed like as a clown, you're like, I've found my own costume, but I, they refine your costume. <laughs> oh, look at this dumpster. I had found my clown <laughs> costume. <laughs> right. But at clown college, they take your persona and like your, your physicality, both of those things. And then they kind of refine it. So in this 86 special, there was a, current clown costume designer at the college, Richard Fick, who's also a, a clown. They have each student visit the, the design department to help the clowns fully form their costumes. So the designer will look at you and um, like, for example, like if you're a white face clown who's rather tall, they'll suggest like, hey, maybe you should have vertical stripes to make you look taller, little things like that. Or maybe your pants should have vertical stripes. Um, but if you're a white face clown who is like has a belly, they'll give you like polka dots to make it look like you have a bigger belly. Or there was one clown that was like a white face clown, but he was more like sophisticated. So he had the polka dots. Like a little suit almost. Maybe. Well, yeah, so he had the polka dots to accentuate his tummy. But because he was like a more classic white face clown and they said that he was more elegant, they gave him more of like a collar also of like taffeta that was like purple so richard was like we're gonna give him this because it's more of like a soft color he's more of an elegant clown a little bit of a subtler clown maybe european in influence yeah so the the they play on like the fabrics and the patterns based on what kind of clown you are so i thought that was interesting is like they just they really pay attention to the type of clown you are and then form the costumes based on that it's not just like a, oh this is polka dots and that's fine yeah it's like here's some goofy colors go crazy it's yeah like- it's like it's purple and you're sophisticated and that's like a lighter color here's some taffeta and that elevates you more it's like oh you might be a very loud clown here's like a bright yellow or something to accentuate exactly. that yeah a lot of the uh, um augustic clowns had like yellows and oranges and a lot of louder ones because those are like the sillier clowns which i thought was really interesting they also said like if you have like a natural silhouette but you want to have a sillier silhouette like like you have a big butt and a big tummy <laughs> they'll make yeah. you like a bodysuit thing so so they'll make you have like a big accentuate tum- that rump 
Yeah. So they'll, they'll make pants that have like a butt pad and like a stomach, which I thought was really cool. So they, they really, uh, this guy was like designing costumes for people and then they'll do like swatches. That's gotta be such an interesting job to be yeah. the person who builds clown costumes for clowns. Like it was so cool. Not only do you need to be like, you know, know like uh, be like a seamstress and like know how to like make stuff in that mm-hmm. way, but you also have to have this very specific like aesthetic that you can like read people and be like, okay, what's gonna bring this out of you? It's almost like you have to know all the clown rules, mm-hmm. but not yourself be a clown. Well, he and he was a clown. Oh, he was. Uh, yeah, he was a clown himself. Well, and then that, was that like, makes sense. Right. Like all of the directors and all the teachers, instructors were clowns as well. So it's like they all they knew all the ins and outs. Truly know the ins and outs. It's not even just hearsay or I've lived with clowns my whole life. It's like, no, no, I am a clown. My mom and dad are clowns, but I decided not to do it. <laughs> yes. I was raised by clowns. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was just so cool. It was just like um based on your character and based on you know the clown type that you are just it was just so cool how how thoughtful the costuming was and then they just not elevated it but they did kind of enhance the already costumes that the students already were bringing to the table well it's like what you said before it's like they're serious about the silliness it's like mm-hmm, exactly it's kind of like you know some people might from the outside might not think that like comedy has um like I will, I don't want to say like a science to it, but there is a procedure kind like of structure. Yeah, exactly. It's like yeah. there there are kind of like rules in it, and like at the end of the day, the rule is be funny. But like there are absolutely like things to focus on, or, or things to avoid, or things you know like there 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 is this certain uh like level of there is a science to it. There is an art to it. Yeah, there's like a formula to a point. Yes. And I mean, it's the ex- same exact thing with clowns. It's just a, it's a it's just a different formula, but still a formula that it needs to be like looked at. And you can break it in the ways once you know the rules, same as anything else. But like there is that thing of like, OK, here's the blueprint. There's so much thought put into it. And like the fact that he I mean, this guy, Richard, was really I mean, truly had these beautiful designs that he had. Uh, I was just like so impressed that they really, you know, it's not a, a joke school. It's like there's time put into every single persona. It makes you wonder if and if there isn't, there should be a like clown Oscars, you know, because there's all these different aspects or just like some kind of award thing where where, you know, people in the circus community can get around because it's so specific and there really isn't any kind of like it, none of it bleeds over into any other thing that can get recognition in the way that awards do. And I mean, and a lot of people think awards can be silly, but like, you know, when it comes to performers, they're validating their work is, is a great way to make these sensitive <laughs> people who are eager for praise feel like they're doing a good job. Of course, there's that Monte Carlo festival. We'll we'll do an episode on it, but that's like it's exactly what you're talking about. It's like OK, Oscars. good. Oscars for a circus. Which has got to be such a kooky show. <laughs> yeah, it's in, it's in Monaco. It's held in Monaco. And it's, uh, I think I've told you this, it's uh, it's Princess Stephanie and her husband. And I can't remember his name. Prince Stephen? <laughs> so, sure. She's the daughter of Grace Kelly. Oh, okay. And so they just started this festival. I think there's like 37 years or something like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And so they have this festival every year in this they award, you know, best of whatever for each, um, like those dust sea lions that we did, they won an award for the best sea lion nostalgia show at Monte Carlo. Good, because they're very good sea yes, lions. Yes, we'll do a whole episode on it because it's very interesting. A Another part of clown school or clown college is the makeup. So, you know, they go over the tools and how you do your makeup face. There's Frosty Little and Tammy Parrish, which are both two very well-known clowns who are giving giving like a live tutorial of how they do their face. They're both white face clowns and they in the special were join, joined by the host Lou Severini and, and Ruth Chaddock, another clown. And she's also like a makeup artist. So Frosty Little and Tammy Parrish are doing their white face makeup. And I thought this was just so fascinating to watch them do it from start to finish. Did their makeup differently, obviously, because their makeups are different. And Tammy also is like, 
everybody's makeup is totally different. It has to be different. She reiterates like yeah. everybody's different. Well, that's part of the clown right. rules. Those are the clown rules, right? They're talking to another clown student and she was saying the same thing. It was just like, we all have to be different. That's the rules, you know? Yeah. You can't be copying anyone else's clown aesthetic. Those are the rules. Um, but so Frosty Little uses zinc. Like, you know, the zinc that you put on your nose. Oh, yeah, that's why. Because I remember when I was a kid and in any cartoon, I watched a lot of cartoons in any cartoon. If there was a lifeguard, they had a white nose. And I would ask my parents, what's with that? And they'd be like, that's zinc. Mm -hmm. It protects, protects your nose. It's weird, though, that like you would. I mean, I know it would look silly if you put it all over you. But like your nose is not the only thing exposed. To I know. This. It's like, is it sticking out? What's, yeah, I always thought that, too. <laughs> it's like, yeah, your nose is important, but your ears are sticking out just as much. So what's the your deal? Your whole face is yeah. also. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? Um, but so Frosty would use a zinc base with olive oil. Well, Frosty is at least protected from the harmful UV rays he of the is. sun. So. so zinc mixed with olive oil mixture. And so... He would, oh, that's got to be hard. Well, not hard to get off, but you can't just wash that no, off. No, no. I mean, they did, and they wanted to stay. So they both would pat their face super dry. And then they would just like put this on super fast. I'm just like, they were, I mean, they've been doing it forever. Well, that was one thing that I was wondering about. Like, what is the time frame it takes to get these, you know, faces on? Because I mean, I, I know, at least in Hollywood, when you see someone on a show that's wearing a lot of like makeup, like, for example, right now I'm watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And whenever you see someone with like a monster makeup or like something, you got to know that took like six hours in the makeup chair. Well, prosthetics. And, yeah, for sure. And so I know this isn't quite that extreme, but I do wonder, like, is it like an hour every time they want to do this? Or like, are these clowns doing like a 15 minute quick thing or like, whoa, what it is it? It seemed like 15 minutes. Yeah, if that. You know, that's pretty impressive, honestly, but they've been doing it forever. You know what I mean? Like, oh, sure. So they both put like full face on, you know, um, and they said it has to be super dry before you start. And then once you have your all your white on, you have to pat it dry. Yeah. To make sure it's like not sticky anymore and like pat, pat, pat. So then then they started to do their mouth. So you would think you would draw over the white, but they don't. They make they they like wipe away on their mouth. Oh, interesting. And their nose, if they're, you know, doing their nose to make room for the red. So it's just straight to skin instead of layering. Yeah, they so they like cut away, they wipe away for their nose and their mouth to make room for the red because if you put the red over the white, it's just going to be messy. And then it's going to smear. Exactly. They both mentioned that clowns tend to over-exaggerate and, and it's best to keep it simple. <laughs> they're yeah. like... They're like, uh, Frosty says that he sees a lot of clowns make a clown face that looks like a jack-o'-lantern and it's too much for <laughs> kids. He's like, yeah. kids are scary of that. Like they're scared of jack-o'-lanterns. You can't have your face like well, that. Well, and I wonder too how much of that is like, you know, these young clowns really trying to make their unique thing. Right. And if they think that, you know, how do I stand out? Right. You know, and so I think probably a lot of that is overcompensating on the makeup. Because, you know, you you've, you in your head without Googling it, just try to picture like a hundred different types of clown makeup. It's kind of hard, you know, oh, it's yeah. like you, you probably have like four or five variants in your head. And unless you actually see different ones, you're you're just not thinking of that. And so these these newer people are probably like, OK, well, maybe if it's just like really big, like I have a really big smile or really big eyes or really. And then, of course, you know, then you're getting into the tricky territory of like, this is at the end of the day for little babies. And yeah, they, they are true. easily scared by extremes. Truly. So they'll do their they'll do their red. What they do to make the white mm -hmm. set is blow dryer. Well, they have like a powder, like a talcum powder. Um, but they say like you can have like a fancy puff. But what they do is and it's way cheaper is like baby powder, talcum powder. Oh, yeah. And they fill it in like a sports sock. And then they just and just smack each other in the face with it. They like lift. They like tilt their head back. She And Tammy's like, just close your mouth, close your eyes and just like sprinkle it on your face and get it mm -hmm. everywhere. And it just sets it. And she's like, just get it all over. And then you dust it off. They almost had like a shaving brush, like old timey, like a um, shaving cream on your face. Oh, yeah. So they dust the excess off. Um, and then they would just keep going with, you know, her. She had like blue on her eyes. 
So she did that. And she's like, after each pass, you put the dust on for their particular white face makeup. Yeah. It sets it. Um, and she's like, and it'll stay for like 12 hours. Frosty uses like a thin, thin, thin makeup, like a, a art brush to like outline everything in black. And she uses like a makeup, a woman's makeup pencil and she like heats it up with a lighter to outline her stuff. And then she has like little gems that she puts around her eyes because she has like little stars around her eyes in blue. Frosty says that the basic colors for clown makeup are white, red, blue. Some people will vary, like will, you know, stray off that. But he's like, for the most part, those are the colors. Well, those those two pop off of white so much. Like you, you have yellow with white. I mean, unless you have black outlines and even then it might not even read for super far away folks. Yeah. So. And, and they, you know, the outlining is like super integral because you have to be able to accentuate like your mouth, you know, and your nose and all that stuff. So Frosty has like a red nose. He doesn't have a clown nose. He just has a red nose. Just draws it on. Yeah. And, um, but she has a clown nose that she just has on with a string and she mentions that in clown college, they teach you how to make clown noses. Ah. And then she has, she just has a big wig. Frosty has like um, just a skull cap and then a little hat, a little red hat on the side, like a little cone hat that he's had for a long time. He said in the olden days, like back in the day when they couldn't ma- get like cone hats, they used to get women's hats and then they would soak them in hot water and then reshape them into cone hats. Oh, wow. They couldn't get like hats like that. Well, what kind of hat are they starting with? I, I I did not know that you could chain. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, manipulate hats so much. It, like a lady's um, cap that's like a felt cap. Okay. Because he has like a red cone hat that's very small. Mm-hmm. That's like a red cone hat, and then it curls up at the end. Yeah. And so I would imagine that he is referencing like women's caps that are flat. That sit on their head like from the 20s. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm guessing is like a felt hat that would maybe have like a feather on it or something like that. Huh. And then they utilize those and like manipulate those back in the day. That's what I'm assuming. Well, it's impressive too, the, like the ingenuity, because so much of this is just like finding stuff and figuring it out on your own. Right. Totally. I mean, like the powder and stuff. I'm sure they only figured out after they were like, huh, this smears all the time. Like, what are we going to do right? about it? My face is melting constantly. <laughs> it's July. <laughs> yeah, and like, you know, if we were worried about kids being afraid before, um, me melting in the middle of my spot is not going to fly. Yeah, like all these different clowns like use different skull caps or like wig caps. Like she's like, I use an old t-shirt and that's like her wig cap. And like he's like, I have a nylon cap. You know, everyone has like a, their different thing that they figured yeah, out. whatever they figured out. So I thought that was interesting. Then there's this gentleman that's like an Auguste clown. So the Auguste clown like we know is like – uh mainly pink face but then there's white parts so he has white parts around his eyes which he does first and then his little bit on his nose a little bit on his mouth he doesn't powder that then he does the pink part and then he powders his face and then he does the black and then he powders it so he sets it all at once kind of yeah he's like i don't powder every pass like a white face clown does you know depending on the clown and the clown makeup it's different but you do set it with the powder and then he glues his clown nose on He's just like, I use, I just glue it on. He's like, it doesn't bother me. I was like, go for it, dude. I mean, yeah, good for you. But like, I've worked with like tough glue before. I mean, when I was a little kid, I built little Warhammer figurines and that glue smells. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> like that, that, that kind of really strong stuff, the kind of stuff that I would imagine you'd want to hold something for 12 hours. Like that stuff smells like caustic. So I don't know how he did it, but good for him. <laughs> you know, you got to work with what works for you. He's just like, I don't want to see the string. You know, it takes a I mean, look, that's a level of professionalism that I can respect. But at the yeah. same time, it's like, Dang. do you want to smell a Sharpie for, you know, 12 hours? Some people would say yes. <laughs> so I thought this was interesting because, you know, they're showing how these really well-known clowns do their makeup. But they also showed uh, a couple of current students in the clown college and their makeup faces they're like, we encourage students to find their makeup face based on their facial expressions. They say, stand in the mirror and make like crazy faces, like make a big smile and make a big eyes and make your big eyebrows and make a big sad face. And like, where are the lines on your face? Yeah. Work with what your face is doing. And work with that. So like, what does your face do? Mm -hmm. Where are your dimples? Make it around that, those things and be like, ah, and like make all these funny faces and then draw 
based on where your mouth and your eyes go and accentuate with well, that. Because then, then it will stay with mm-hmm. it. Like if you make these extreme faces and draw the black line around that, when your face relax, it will also relax to the to yeah, that point. So they're like, they said, make faces in the mirror, sad, happy, goofy, and then see your natural facial expressions, draw your clown face using those lines, those natural lines, and then you can dramatize based on that and that that's the best way to make your clown face you know and then you can choose your colors and you can put gems on there you can make shapes or whatever well then inherently it's going to be different from other people's right because everyone's face is a little different exactly yeah exactly you're gonna gonna get the subtle differences in there without really having to try Yeah, exactly right and then at the end of this special, they were like, if you want to send your clown application, this is the address. <laughs> we're always taking clowns. It was so interesting because I was like, there's no internet. This is the only way they can advertise. Yeah, mail it to the clown train and hope that it gets it. That's exactly right. It was like mail to 3201 New <laughs> But Mexico only if Avenue. it gets there between this and this month because we're moving. Yeah, it was like all an effort to get new clowns coming, coming. So I thought that was so wild. And so... I watched a couple of these specials and, and they're all in the 80s. And I was wondering, yeah. like, why was there so so much pushing of the clown college in the 80s? Maybe it was there was a, an introduction of like animal rights and like the circus wasn't doing well. I just Yeah, could, I got to lean more on clowns and some of the other things. Or maybe like TV was the best way to advertise to get more clowns. But I I kept digging and upon further investigation... It turned out that so Irving Felt, who bought the circus in 1967 from John Ringling North, which I said in the beginning for eight million dollars. Yep. For the small price of eight million dollars. <laughs> the little meager, meager uh, price. Then he sold it to Mattel in 1971. Interesting. For 50 million dollars. That's a lot more. Right. That's way more. So he in, in uh, which year? How how soon? Ni- 1971. And he and he got in the 60s it was like 10 oh, like roughly 10 years later and he made uh well, so what is That math? was like 4 years, not even 1967 four, to 1971. Oh yeah, cuz it was late in the 60s. That's insane and he sells it for a how much increase? Like a That's five like, time uh, increase more than yeah, that? Yeah, it's like he made f- $42 million on that. That's insane. But he had already started that clown college. So I don't, and it was probably still going. That's trading up. Like the story about the guy who like traded a paperclip for a, a house or whatever. That's this. That's right? this. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's this. 100%. But then... He buys it back from Mattel in 1982. For how much? I couldn't find how much. He was embarrassed it was so high. (laughs) He was like, too much. (laughs) Yeah, $100 million. (laughs) But so then Irving Feld passes away in 1984. Uh And his his son, Kenneth Feld, takes over. He had been a part of the circus since 1970. Kenneth? I'm not sure as what. I couldn't, I, I didn't uh, uncover what. I didn't dig too deep, but. Uh, Let's just say that he fed the seals. Sure, right. Um, sure, why not? I, I'm sure as a clown or something. That uh, would make too much sense. Yeah, probably not. Um, so now he's the owner of Ringling in 1984. So I think he was probably like, let's promote it. Now it's ours again. Yeah. I mean, we've already did all this work to make this thing and then get it back. Yeah, so I was like, might as well. Like, there was like four specials in the 80s. I was like, what is happening? This is strange. <laughs> but that's got to be why. That is a lot. But all, all just for selling the clown college, right? Yeah, so it was it's like, all clown college stuff. So I was like, this has got to be why. You know, what if what if buying it back? What if, you know, he gets into his older age and he's like, the one regret I had was selling the circus. <laughs> I'm going to buy it back at any expense. And then it, they, they go into debt. And then the, the, like Kenneth is like, we need to make <laughs> Thanks, back Dad. our money. And then you, Thank then you, you. pass away. Um, and now I have this. Yeah. Thanks for passing me your debt. How about we make use of that college? Yeah. Wow. So I thought that was very interesting. So, but then it was like Feld Entertainment and uh, that's Kenneth Feld Entertainment. So perhaps he was just like, I need to keep this legacy thriving. So I'm going to heavily promote it. <laughs> what do I got to work with? A clown college? Well, we're going to get some Why specials not? on TV. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so according to Wikipedia in 1993, the clown college moved from the Venice, Florida arena to Baraboo, Wisconsin. It's a fun town name. Yes, which is where the five Ringling brothers are from. 
the you know the original Ringling mm. Brothers. So he continued to operate the school through 1997. Uh, and then the clown college closed because allegedly because the needs of the show had changed, the school was no longer considered profitable, allegedly or necessary. And as clowning had moved back into the mainstream of performing arts. So, but at that point there was nearly 1500 graduates, many of whom were now teaching others, you know, the lessons that they had learned from the clown college. Of course. You got to keep the tr clown tradition strong. Yeah. And so it was more of like, uh, it wasn't as, I guess, hard to get clowns. And also the, maybe the stigma of, you know, being a clown wasn't there anymore. It was like, oh, you're yeah. a clown. It's fine. I mean, you show enough specials in the 80s and you can change the <laughs> the public opinion of any career. And they made Dick Van Dyke like an honorary graduate of the school within that special. Well, so he was like on top of the world then. So if you want to legitimize something, if Dick's into it, America's into it. Yeah. I mean, he's so goofy. That makes sense. Yeah, right? it makes sense. Natural fit. And then Willard Scott, who was a weatherman, was the first person to portray Ronald McDonald in a television advertisement, and they also made him. Oh, yeah. When did Ronald come on the scene? Because that's mainstream clowning right there. I'm not sure when he was in the first advertisement, but Willard Scott, who was Ronald McDonald in the first TV advertisement, they made him an honorary graduate of the school as well. Ronald McDonald is such, a, such an interesting like thing because... Yes, he has the expressions and the simple mannerisms of a clown, but they, as far as I remember, and granted, I, I, I you know, I was a kid in the 90s, so while well, he was still around, at that point, like, he was, they were also almost trying to make him, like, the wholesome, like, representative. He, I don't know if it was ever the case, but when I was a kid, he was not doing, like, clown bits, you know what I mean? No, he would just like I don't believe he so. would like walk up to a table with like a tray of McDonald's and like sit with a kid and be like, hey, everything's cool. <laughs> and, I know, right? Yeah. And it was like and, and that's it. And that was it. He never did anything clowny. He was just like a generic mascot who happened to be a clown. No, it's like him and his weird friends. And that's yeah. It. And his friends who seem to have no like connection to each other like whatever grimace is has nothing to do with clowns and whatever the hamburglar is doing has nothing to do with grimace or clowns or the chicken nugget girl or like any of the weird mcdonald yeah. universe <laughs> where's that show and those pom-poms the sentient pom-poms i think they might have had a show oh they you're right they think they did i think they did i feel like i've seen like weird old youtube footage of it or something <sighs> man Let's bring that back. I would watch that in a hot second. Really, the Hamburglar is the only one that makes any kind of sense in context. Like, I guess the Chicken Nugget Girl kind of does. But, like, Ronald and Grimace and, and the Pom Poms, you're kind of just like, what are you doing? Yeah. What are they? <laughs> how do you sell <laughs> it's this? It's true. It's 100%. <laughs> is Grimace supposed to be a potato? He's shaped like a potato. Also, Grimace, it's like, that's a that's a bad face. It's a frown. Yeah, you're like, yeah. <laughs> It's weird because like, you know, I when I was a kid, I used to associate the different characters with a different food item that McDonald's mm. had. I was like, the hamburger is he's he's hamburgers. The the chicken girl is she's chicken nuggets. Sure. Um, and I was like, Grimace milkshake? I don't know. Yeah, like, what is he? And then and, and then Ronald, uh, you, you just it starts to fall apart at that point. You're like, I don't know. <laughs> he's got yellow, he's french fries and ketchup. Like, I don't know. You're grasping at straws, right? I really, like, I am. Um so I, I no idea what's going on there, but I wonder if like the because like if if Ronald came out around this time, it might have been in response to these like ads in the eighties and stuff that kind of like revitalized clown interest, and then McDonald's is like, well, clearly, I mean, this is what the kids want. Like, yeah, right. They obviously love this. They love Let's clowns. Make but he's not going to do any clown shit. No, 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 no. He will sell you things. He is a capitalism clown. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. But he uh, will, he does have a fun foundation. So he is a entrepreneur and he helps people in the Oh my God. So it seems like Clown College goes away for a while. I because it closes, right, in 97, just shy of its 30th year in operation. And then it seemingly picks up again. I couldn't quite find 
where it stops and starts. I mean, it obviously stops in 97, but then it starts again because I found these articles about auditions and advertising auditions and stories of no- newly hired clowns mm-hmm. by way of Clown College in 2014, 2015. Huh. Yeah, it was weird. And we know that Ringling Brothers, the circus, closes all the way in 2017, but there's a couple links that, like, I'll click on Ringling Brothers Clown College links from these articles from 2014 and 15, and it takes me nowhere. Because, because it was down at that time. Because it, because it's gone now, oh, okay. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I hmm. couldn't really find, like, when it started and stopped in that lull of 97 yeah. to, to 2017. And I think that, like I was saying, is that it wasn't profitable for them anymore. And they had churned out so many clowns that some of them were teaching on their own. Ah, uh, that, yeah, that makes That's sense. That's probably part of it. And then maybe opening some, because there's some circus arts schools still, mm-hmm. like there's Clown Conservatory, which we'll talk about, that have, you know, very clown centered uh, curriculum. So that could be why that makes sense. You know, like it just, it's less low, it's less in one spot and more starts to spread out. Right. But there's these articles, like there's a New York CBS local article that covers 2014 Ringling Brothers auditions, but they are talking about like clown college. But so mm-hmm. I'll read some quotes from this article. Um, Cause it's still represented as like clown college or clown auditions. Yeah. So it says 40 decidedly silly souls serious about cutting it as a clown did their best to impress circus brass in the hopes of getting a coveted opening on Monday. Rappaport reported, quote, I would really like to travel with the circus and make people happy and make them laugh and maybe get near a lion. That would <laughs> that would be really <laughs> cool. Clown hopeful Kim Kaiser said. Monday's auditioners came from all walks of life, a nurse, an electrician, uh, an electrics, a technician, and a pizza delivery man were among those trying out for the greatest show on earth. Boss clown Taylor Albin has been with the show for five years and explained what it takes to fill his black and blue shoes, the heart, the size of Alaska, the desire, the passion, and it is just get out there and make people laugh. He told rap report every year, more than 4,000 people apply to be a clown for ringling brothers only 14 are selected this makes me happy inside this makes me a content person this is what i want to do for the rest of my life says an auditioner but what i think happened and i spoke to a friend of mine that's a clown and was a clown for ringling was i think that they did auditions and then you did like a week yeah and they called it clown college but that was like auditioning you know what i mean for for they were basically just auditioning you for the show. Right, right. That's kind of what I was thinking might happen. Like it was almost as if the either the reporters or the people like trying to generate buzz about this opportunity. Exactly. About the school. Be- because at the end they're like, they'll be here these dates. Come on down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, it's also a thing is like clown college is like a term that even as like a kid, I was aware of. Like that it was a place that you could go to learn this. And so it might have just been kind of like easier to say and to generate buzz than if they're just like, here's clown auditions. Right. So and I asked her because I was like, so wait, what what was up with like clown college? Because it was gone by the time you were a clown. And she's like, Yeah, it really wasn't a school by the time I was there. They had a week that they called Clown College where they took the new clowns to the Clown Hall of Fame in Baraboo Mm -hmm. and taught them the ringling style of makeup, settled on looks, had us write gags and learn the show. And you had to pass that week in order to officially be offered a contract. So fast tracking you. Yeah. So that was Clown College, you know, at the time when she was, I think it was like 2014. Yeah. That she did that. And this is my Instagram pal, R, who was on the Ringling train, who gave us all that train mm-hmm. info. Sweet train deets. Yeah. So I think that it, because so many clowns had been cranked out from the actual clown college and then were teaching, mm-hmm. Ringling Brothers was like, we can't afford to do this clown college, but we'll have this like a summer camp version of it yeah. for a week. and. And we'll screen people during our audition and then call it Clown College. Mm -hmm. And maybe we'll get some good clowns out of it. And just give them like a history of Clown College and clowning. Show them the eggs. Let them know what's up. Yeah. (laughs) Right. But so Ringling Brothers Clown College isn't 
the only clown education institute mm. cranking out fresh clowns. And in fact, there are various clown education resources still on differing levels. Uh, none of them would like the reputation that Ringling Brothers has, yeah. but they are just as great and helpful. And, and I spoke to a handful of people that are clowns now that have a variety of education levels and these places are still, you know, functioning. So some places that I found that are clown education institutions, one was called Toby's Clown Foundation Incorporated. They offer an eight week course on clowning. Got to keep the incorporated part. Yes. So this is what their website says, quote, students are taught about the history of clowning and different types of clowns are introduced then everybody gets assistance in choosing their type of clown and learns how to embellish a character with clown parts and props. The clown wouldn't be a clown without makeup, so that is taught too. Being a safe clown and interacting with different ages are important skills taught during clown classes. But it's not all about looks. Classes provide information on expressions, acting movements, skits, and one-liners. Simple magic tricks, face and cheek painting, and balloon art are also presented. Generally, a broad basic instruction is provided. Most graduating clowns choose certain parts of their skills to expand upon. The clown school will provide all students with a professional clown makeup initial startup kit, one year paid membership to the Toby the Clown Foundation and Toby Clown Alley with an ID card, a one year subscription to their newsletter, and then a graduation certificate after completion of 24 hours of class time. And participation in the student clown show. And then it says it's offered periodically for both adults and children and where to email for information. So I thought that was interesting. There's another place that I saw on Reddit called the Erie. It was like in Lake Erie, Irresistible mm -hmm. Clown School. Another I've been eight to Lake Erie. Have you? Well, then you can go to this clown school. I have. My dad used to work on the Stars on Ice show that would film up there. Get out. Did you get to go? Oh yeah, I got really tired of it because what, the way it would work was, if if he got if he did the job, which he did for a couple of years, um, the day after or the evening of Thanksgiving, oh. we would have to drive to Lake oh, Erie. That's far. Um, and as a as an only child, um, the town of Lake Erie has one dinky toy store and nothing else for me. <laughs> Um, so it was just like my dad was working there and we, you know, we'd get to go to the show and I saw the, you know, that bald guy do the backflip on ice a few times, That's cool. but after a while I'm like, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to do this long <laughs> car ride and this is dumb town. And... <laughs> oh man. Nice lake though. So this is also eight week clown school focusing on the basics of being a clown, which include character development, how to look, walk and walk and act like a clown basic performance skills, costuming, makeup, skits, walk-around activities, improvisation, and more. Upon a gala graduation celebration with your friends and family, you will have the opportunity to become a member of our Clown Alley and join us at events and parades for all budding clowns ages 8 and up, accompanied by a parent or a guardian. 8 and up, that is a big age range. Yeah, so that seems to be, because a lot of these are like, you have to be older, and this is like... Yeah. For ch ch baby clowns, you know, <laughs> you'd think that you'd think that they would have a uh, this is the baby clown <laughs> like one. Right. And this totally. is the adult clown because it's just such a wildly different like, you know, having a 10 year old and a 40 year old in the same class. I mean, of all the things, it's the funniest that clown school is the one that would do this. But like, <laughs> it does seem like you might be teaching different. I mean, maybe it's the same skill, so it doesn't matter. But it just, I just can't think of any other scenario where you would be taking a class and there is that age discrepancy. So there's a clown school in LA. It's called the clown school. Yep. This is more of like, two is that the one at the Lyric Hyperion? Mm, I don't think so. Is this like a big clown i don't think it's at the lyric uh mm. that's the only place i know of that does clown like lessons i don't know i don't know i don't know if you'd call it a, a clown school but i know you can like take uh clown lessons because i know their classes are just online right now at this which place. also you know like i know a lot of things like ucb and like improv stuff they're they're doing like online classes because like you know everyone's just trying to do their best in the pandemic but like clowning especially is something that's so like non-verbal yeah. It seems like weird. Like, how would you do it on Zoom? You know, it just seems like so hard to do. I mean, all of the shows 
pick a big hit uh, with the Zoom thing. It's just different. It, but... This this school's off of Eagle Rock Boulevard. So. Oh, okay. This says that it's in LA offering specified classes geared toward modern clowning with classes. So I'll I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll describe some of the classes that they that are shown on their website. Um, there's a Sunday night series. It's called Permission to be Powerful, Extreme Joey, Extreme ah. Joey with Jane Anderson. So the cost of that class, because I thought the cost was interesting to me. I don't know why. I always think price is interesting. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so it's $250. It's, it's about a month-long class. Uh, it seemed to be like a, it's a one-time-a-week class, this one. I was really hoping the price would be something non-money-based. The price is like a good story. <laughs> <laughs> right? Tell us a fable. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You got to bring something unique to clown school. Um, so Jan Henderson, one of Canada's leading master clown teachers, writes, quote, after years of seeing talented performers undervalue their work and lose confidence on stage, I created a character called Extreme Joey, which allows people to reclaim their power. Feel what it's like to be so high status, so beautiful that minions fall over themselves to wait on you and serve your every whim. Enjoy absolute selfishness without guilt, the limitless <laughs> presence that comes from Knowing you are the center of the universe, unleash your clown's inner extreme Joey and dare to be fabulous. This class is 18 plus. You need the these are the materials you need: water-based makeup, which is approximately thirty-five dollars. Costumes, costume from the wardrobe of your life! Exclamation part. Uh, okay. Prerequisite: clowning experience required. That's very broad. <laughs> yeah, that that could be literally anything. Truly. Uh, so another class is Sunday morning series, Rebel Clown, Alive and Kicking with Cla- Caroline Dream. This is a Zoom class. The description is the clown's role is to be provocative, question the status quo, voice discontent, deflate the arrogance of the powerful, mock absurd regulations, be irreverent, insolent, and bold enough to poke fun at anything and everything. If you worry that the clown's anarchic, anarchic, spirit i can't talk is dwindling within you fear no more join legendary clown teacher and author caroline dream to engage in a series of foolishly disrespectful activities you'll be invited to risk severe clown punishment to stand up for the underdogs and incite them (laughs) to resist you'll explore the fun of being righteously angry of of lodging a complaint of making up ridiculous laws and of parroting authority figures behind their backs and be guided to do this in a way that inspires others to recognize their conventional conventionality and dare to be different 18 plus all clown levels are welcome to this class so these are modern clown classes (laughs) these are very cerebral yes and you you can you can tell um yeah but the the the, both of these kind of go into that thing i mentioned earlier which makes sense because i was kind of drawing it from modern clowns but i do think it is applicable to the you know the more traditional thing of just like these classes if you can boil them down to like what's the same about these two things that seem to take a different like angle Mm -hmm. is like they are training you to be unabashedly a certain way right don't give a shit do we yes it's like you are going to act a certain way and it is not about what people might think of that it's to empower the fact that you can be a certain way Mm -hmm. kind of like really highlight like whether it was in the second one it's like if you're going to be a little more like a rabble rouser troublemaker like almost like robin hood like cause trouble for good kind of a thing or the where the other one had like a completely different thing the the synonymous aspect is you're going to be very much this thing whatever this like trait is that we're going to try and hone in you you're going to be that no matter what i think the other one was like you're going to be this powerful figure right 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 Um, the extreme joey and it's almost like finding the power in what you're doing whether it's ridiculous or extra ridiculous or extra yeah it's interesting whereas the ringling brothers college seems to be like you have an innate want to make people laugh and we're going to refine Mm -hmm. the other stuff that you don't have down which is juggling which is your makeup which is your costume yeah Yeah, let's get the fundamentals basically but at the core you have the thing like like when i went to Mm -hmm. school for photography uh i was like i don't know what an f-stop is 
which people probably don't know that aren't photographers, yep. <laughs> which is fine. And you know what I mean? But like the technical stuff, I didn't know, but I knew what pictures I wanted to take. You could frame well, probably. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like uh, I know what photos I wanted to take. I know how I wanted to take them. And those things I feel like you can't teach, you know, like, yeah, it's a, just art stuff. It's like and clowning is an art form. Exactly. It's like, do you have a good eye or not? Um, you can make your eye better. And I mean, there, there's always uh, like occasions where someone maybe like needs to bring it mm -hmm. out of themselves for whatever reason. It's kind of like held up in there. But it's still but there. The, exactly. At the end of the day, there is still that thing that's there, it's, whether it needs to be coaxed out or just honed or what. But it's got to be there. But these modern classes are very, um, I'm not knocking. They're pushing the boundaries. I'm not knocking them, but they're very uh, specific. <laughs> you know what well, I mean? Well, the, the second one, you you talked about how it was like shake up the status quo. And this, it's like, what on earth could this class be like? Yeah. They really got to wonder. They seem more geared towards modern performance in general. and Which food. modern clowning is kind of its whole a whole other, like there, there's absolutely like similarities, but there is it's definitely just like a whole different bag. It's a whole different thing. Yeah. Also, modern clowning, it's like it's not about makeup or anything like that. Like it, it's, it's just like, it's just a type of performance, basically character based performance. An easy one to reference like the kind of thing we're th talking about if you're like, well, what do you mean it's character based? On Netflix, Natalie Palomides, who's like a local L.A. like clown, who's like she she's kind of like the at the height of it. Uh, this like new clown movement. Um, that's a, a, a Netflix show that me, Callie and I have both seen in person. Um, uh, and that's kind of what like she's just taken up like she's made a character for herself for the show. And she is like she is a great example of like no fear i am this character right now and nothing else matters and i'm just gonna be so honest to the character and have no nothing is gonna like stop me from doing whatever i think this character would do yeah if you guys have a chance to to watch this special it's very funny and very unique you're not gonna see anything else like it yeah it's on netflix it's called nate and it's really good and i like it because it is a good example of modern clowning i yeah. think um because she has like a message. Yeah. It just makes you think it's a super. It does um, what you want comedy to do, which is like exactly. be ridiculous and silly and over the top and see something you haven't seen. And then at the end of the day, you're also like, oh, there's also a message. Like, yeah, there's like super thought provoking. Yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Good. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Well, yeah. It's like and I feel like that's like the best comedy. That's what it does. Right. Like it makes you laugh, but also. Kind of kind of in a way. I mean, I know we were kind of like ragging on it a little bit, but like this this uh one of the class you you described, um, it was kind of like it's like shake up the status quo and question things and blah blah. And a lot of comedy, even like like your everyday comedian, a lot of what they're doing, um, or at least some of them, is questioning things that like we might take for granted, but are when you actually look at them, you're like, wait, this is actually kind of ridiculous. Or why do we do, you know, this, that, and the other thing? And so the best stuff makes you laugh. And then you look at the stuff and you're like, oh, yeah, that is fucked up. Or, oh, yeah, that is yeah. really weird. And we do just act like it's a normal thing when it shouldn't be a normal thing. Right, right. Or, like, this isn't clear cut. Yeah. Like, there is no, like, yeah, it's good. It, that's a really awesome special. And um, highly recommend. I'm in the crowd. So, <laughs> yeah, you see, watch it and see if you can see Callie and then let us know if you can see Callie and give us the timestamp. Yes. And give me the timestamp and tell me how my hair looks. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, please. It's um, I'm half drunk. It's fine. OK, uh, <laughs> it's good. So I spoke to a friend of the pod, our pal Herbert, who is a clown. Herb. Um, and I asked him about his clowning education and because he is a practicing clown. And I think his work is awesome from what I've seen on Instagram. And he's just a cool dude. Um, and he said that he's not had any formal training until most recently where he started taking courses from clowns from Cirque, uh, Cirque du Soleil, a, a few week course, which he sat, he found super helpful. I asked if it's more of like refining of skills and, and makeup and techniques, which seems like a lot of these education, you know, yeah. schools are, these clown schools are, <clears throat> and he echoed, yes. Um, it, it's, this is what he says, quote, it seemed more on the skill set and act structure. The more I look into everything, there's a big diversity of what a clown is. 
Yeah. Which is true. And what is being taught? I've heard of some people only refer to themselves as doing physical physical comedy as the word clown seems to have a preconceived or cliched idea attached to it. All the teaching schools and method vary in what style of clowning they're geared toward. So some isn't about makeup or minimal, if that, which seems to be true, right? Like, yeah, that's what I, I mean. It seems uh, I mean, that's kind of what we were talking about with the modern clown stuff. Totally. Right? It's like like Na- in Natalie's show, Nate, like she is wearing like a get up. There's definitely some stuff. But it's not it's nothing like the traditional clown makeup that yeah. we reference in other episodes. But she has a character and, yes. and her and she is in a costume and that is her mm-hmm. costume always as Nate. It's always been that. Yep. It's always that clothes. That is Nate. It's always been Nate from the beginning that we've ever seen. Always like. Yeah, that's, that's the one Nate. thing about the act that never changed. Yeah. And there's props that she's never not used. She's always had these props. She's always had that makeup. She's always had, you know, like that's Nate. So it's like she found the character and then just figured out like, mm -hmm. okay, how do I not only be this character in this space, but like say what I want to say. Yeah, but it's not a traditional circus, you know what I mean? Because that's not the forum it is, you know? Yeah. Um, It's like a one person show. Yeah, exactly. But it is clowning, I think. Uh, Mm -hmm. And I had to think about it because I was like, oh, this is like a one person show. Like it's like, you know, one woman show. And you're like, well, well, then what's the difference between like if you went to like a Broadway one person show kind of a deal and this? And like, is there a difference? And like, I I think there is. There is because she's super physical. She's not talking Mm -hmm. a lot. You know, uh, it's it's honestly really impressive how she can fill the space. I mean, I've seen the shorter versions. I still haven't seen the Netflix one yet, but I've seen her perform it like live. Um, and it's honestly impressive Yeah. because like if you tried to boil down like what her like script is, it was like she could do the same show and it wasn't the same each time. But she was all but it was always felt like you were getting the same essence which is like a really tough thing to do without a script. It's totally. like you're, in, but it was because it was the character. That was the through line. It was the same character, same message, but just. There's a part l- in that, I hope this doesn't ruin the special, but it's very funny. And this points to why I think it's more of like a modern clowning, but still clowning is like mm-hmm. there's a part where she gets everybody to start saying ask, ask. And yeah. she's hollering ask and then she gets an axe and she's like axe and she's <laughs> but it's like that's clowning, you know, where it's yeah, like every, it's a very silly bit. Super silly, but it's like it those words are similar. She's hitting a yeah. piece of wood with an axe. It's funny. You know what I mean? Like you have to watch it, but mm-hmm. it's the way she executes that moment is fucking hilarious. Yeah. I've ruined it for you. Sorry. Um, but it's funny when she <laughs> but does it, it. It is that like really whimsical silliness, like almost Looney Tune esque, like silly bits totally. like that. It's, you know? And that's what makes it uh, modern clowning to me as opposed to a one person show. The bits are really, really yeah. good. I spoke to another clown, Cabbages. Cabbages, great clown name. It's so good. Um, and he is currently, he, Advert- not advertises but he's like his tag is like a birthday clown mm-hmm. i was like so you know what what's your clown education and he was basically like i just started doing this he's always been like very physically talented as far as juggling and balance mm-hmm. and at the beginning of the pandemic he had a couple of friends that had their birthdays canceled and so to help them like cheer up he sent them like birthday messages as cabbages Oh, See, because he used to do street performances and then the, you know, he was doing these messages for his friend's birthdays. And then in May 2020, he was like, Cabbages was officially born. And he realized that <laughs> it was like his lot in life to make people smile. He had like some other experiences that made him be like, I should for sure do this. This is what I should do. He's not had any formal training other than like hours and hours of practicing skills like juggling mm-hmm. and balancing. Self-taught essentially. Yeah, totally. So he continues to pursue clowning online. And surely once we get out of like this, you know, isolation life that we're in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, people are going to be starving for live performance. I'll tell you that. Yeah, he'll he'll explore a further expanding clowning career. But I think that he's a good example to me of someone that's like, this is something that he is at his heart, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, Yeah. And he just has honed it on his own and his skill set on his own. So I thought that was interesting, but he's not had any formal training, but is a clown. So he's really funny. 
Um, and so also a friend of the pod, my friend R, who is a female clown who also performs hair hang. Um, she's just so rad though. And she traveled with the Ringling Brothers as a clown. And she, I just hit her up for awesome insight and she's just great in general as a person. I asked her what her formal training was because it's so hard to get a spot at and Ringling as a clown apparently. So, sure. um, and did she go through their school first? Um, and then I realized that their school doesn't exist. So um, she was like, so, yeah. uh, but she said she did a year, uh, at the clown conservatory, which is oh, a good name for a clown school, right? It's in San Francisco. So she said when she went, it was run by Joe Diefenbacher, which is, um, an amazing clown teacher director. She says, by the way, and, I'll just say, I'll just read what she wrote. She says, amazing clown teacher, director, by the way, the best. And he has a new book out, this mm. guy. Super recommend that. She says, I did Ringling Brothers right after that, after doing that program, the Clown Conservatory program. Mm -hmm. They Ringling was doing auditions in San Francisco that summer right after. So I auditioned Perfect. with a Rolling Globe clown act. And I joined the show that November. So the Rolling Globe is like, she was probably balancing on the big ball. And, and doing a clown act. Um, so that was 2012, 2013, when I did Clown Conservatory for the first time. I also went back recently, she says, I think 2018, 2019. It was a different director, different teachers, totally different program. So I asked her, I was like, do you, do you think it was better, different? Like what... Yeah, what's the deal? Yeah, I was I was like, did you find that it was more beneficial the second time around or what? Because it really does seem like there is a wildly different amount of like teaching styles of clown. Like there's obviously some like through lines that never really change. But it does seem like because there is no longer this kind of, you know, consensus of it. There's just a lot of people's different angles at how you teach, what should be highlighted. And, you know, right. the, the core of it's the same, but all there's a lot of variation, it seems. So like. she said, I definitely think that Clown Conservatory helped me get into Ringling. I wouldn't have cared to even audition if I haven't if I hadn't done Clown Conservatory. And mm -hmm. first time versus second time at Clown Conservatory was just different. I'm glad I did both. But the first time was completely, utterly transformative. So perhaps the teachers or the curriculum or yeah. whatever was just more, uh, yeah, just better, better for her. Well, it's also tough to beat the first time, you know, like if you're being introduced to a world, there's so much new magic to it, you know, like also now that, she knows how the strings work now. Exactly. Yeah. She has, she can see behind the curtain. So before it was like all new, that's such a good point. So like, and, and you know, who knows the first teacher may have been better uh, or, or what, and not to knock their, you know, teaching and everything. But I do imagine part of it is just like the wonder is our, is, is there the first time. Yeah. I mean, I've had teachers in the past, like for photography where, and I've had just like one where I'm like, you are the best and I'll take any class. It, having a really good teacher is like it, really crazy. Yeah. Like it, it is honestly wild how much a good teacher who like cares about you and the like art form they're teaching you can really do totally for you as a person. Totally. And I looked up the clown conservatory just online just to see what their curriculum is now. Um, so mm -hmm. this is the description online. Clown conservatory is a multidisciplinary training program in physical comedy, precision, idios idiocy, and eccentric acting. This 24 week training program is a tilt a whirl of character creation and narrative clowning where the conjuring of solo duo and ensemble work culminates in showcases for ring stage and film. Our program's directive is to foster the super versatile human cartoon. So their hmm. curriculum currently features classes in the quote foundations of funny, um, which it says like core technique classes in character, slapstick, and physical comedy, mime, circus skills, props, puppetry, and more. And the Human Cartoon Studio, which is collaborative workshop for developing characters, acts, and performances for ring, stage, and screen. And then further professional development, that's all touted at this clown and circus arts school. So because they also have like the other circus arts classes, it seems. Mm -hmm. And Clown Conservatory seems to be like, a pretty well-known clown school 
to me, at least, at least on the West yeah. Coast. Um, they got the best name. So. And lastly, like I have a friend, Meatball. Also, great clown name. Yeah. Killing it. Who uh, befriended me at Cole Brothers, and he he taught himself how to stilt walk, and he knew how to juggle. But when he went to Cole Brothers, he was just like, "These are the things I can do." Um, and I, I would like to join your circus. I'm assuming just based on knowing him that because of his charisma, yeah, they were like, you got to be a clown because he's just the sweetest guy. Well, his, that's the thing. Yeah, his attitude was just like clown. Well, you need that. I mean, I, I, like the charisma. And I know I, I bring a lot of this stuff back to three studios, but I think that they're a very apt, uh, easily recognizable kind of demonstration in clown. And the charisma is such a big thing because you can have all the physical skills. You can know how to juggle and blah, blah, blah. But it's the difference between like Curly and Shemp. It's like they had Shemp try to do the stuff that Curly did, but it wasn't the same. And every, anyone who's watched any amount of Three Stooges will always tell you no one can beat Curly. Like no one could beat him. Like there was people who could get close and could emulate him better, but he was just... He had he had a certain amount of charisma and you just couldn't right. beat that. And that's that's, I think, the, maybe the best way of describing this kind of like X factor, like kind of like raw talent that certain people have. It's like like Chris Farley is another good example of like there's just a thing about him that if someone else was doing what he would do, that might be kind of funny. But they can find a way to bring this extra bit to it that just feels authentic or right or just like they figured out their version of of this, whatever their performance is. And that's the thing you can't teach or you can't get anyone else to copy. So if you can figure out what your thing of that is, that's the thing to like foster and grow and make better. That's your clown makeup, basically. Yeah, that's the perfect. It's the authenticity. It's the thing that you're like, you're not forcing this out. This is just how you are. This is natural. Yeah, exactly. And you like it and you like entertaining people. And it's and with that, that's the way you can keep doing it over and over and make things new and fun and interesting because you're not trying to emulate. You're just doing what comes natural and you're showcasing your particular. Yeah, I mean, yes, it's physically tiring, but it's not going to make you. This is not going to drain you so much because this mm-hmm. is how you are. In fact, it'll probably like give you energy. Yeah, in yeah, a way. you love it ultimately. I mean, mm-hmm. these people that were trying out for these uh, for the clown college, it, at least in these specials that I was watching, uh, like there was one special called Real People, and these people that were trying out were like, "I tried out last year, and I try out this year, and if I'm not a clown, and by the age 25, like." I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, they're just like, I need yeah. to do this. You know, it was like, yeah, this is like, me. this was like their dream. They wanted this so bad. Like they want to make people laugh. It's like, so it's yeah. pretty rad. So it's great. And I mean, knowing that, and th- this is true about any like dream to do, but knowing what that is, is such a wonderful thing. Mm-hmm. Like for anybody, yeah. you know, cause then, Find, cause like finding you know, your calling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a wonderful thing. And I mean, that's this true, whether it's clowns or, you know, I don't know any other profession that I can't think of right now, because <laughs> the only thing we've been talking about is clowns, clowns. ice cream uh, scoopers. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I would love that job if it paid well. Apparently, um, it's pretty it's pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, we've talked about it. It's hard. You got to have a lot of wrist strength. <sighs> so that's a bit of background surrounding the famed Ringling Brothers Clown College and just clown education in general mm-hmm. and what they really teach a clown. So now we know that a clown cannot be taught, but it can be refined. Indeed. You can hone the clown. Right. But the clown must first come to you. That's right. A clown cannot be uh, made, but can be uh, sculpted. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Chipped away at? Chipped no away at. So, uh, the clown pencil can be sharpened, but you can't make the pencil. Sure. Sure. I mean, what if, what if the, like, you know, this small, like, you know, only about less than like get into Harvard kind of thing. What if that was all just like the hullabaloo to just make clowning seem more, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, um, prestigious. Prestigious. Mm. Yes. Yeah. It could be. I mean, I've heard that. I read that multiple places because. They just they audition so many places and so many people, but they really only accept like thirty to forty people or thirty to fifty people. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess in one one clown show, it's like it, how many clowns can you actually feasibly have? Yeah. So I mean, like based on the amounts of of people applying and then accepted, the percentage is similar to the acceptance of Harvard. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 
It is prestigious, I suppose. It is, and honestly, it is funny to me. Cla- the the like the can you think of a sillier profession? And yet, it has just as much rules as any other thing, right. which is kind of wonderful. Uh, no one's paying anybody off to get into this school, though. No, nope. not that I know. Well, I mean, you probably. never know. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. That's true. There's, there could be some clown dynasty families that really want to make sure their kids. That's so funny. Yeah, <laughs> can become the next big clown. Ronald McDonald paid to get You're in. Ronald That's... McDonald's <laughs> child. <laughs> They're really fe- like uh... spending a lot of money to make sure. They go to the Clown Institute. Uh, that's why he's not funny. Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> they, they come out. They like are a clown. Like The makeup is their skin, but they're just not very funny. They're just very <laughs> good at business. Oh, man. Uh, so that's Clown College, guys. That's uh, the clowns. And uh, thanks all for listening. Thank you oh so much. And also a shout out to our, our Patreon people. Yeah, Patreon people. We love you. Yeah, so thanks, Herbert, obviously. Herb. Eric. Shout out, Eric. Melanie. Melanie. Rory. Rory. Allie. Allie. Thank you guys so much. Uh, you guys are wonderful human beings. You guys are radical, and we'll have some uh, cool extras coming your way soon. Working on those extras. And if you want to subscribe to our Patreon, you can go to patreon.com backslash circus stories. It helps us out a ton. Helps us. The more, you know, patrons we have helping us out the easier it is to make this show um it's true and so really and and like if if things really start to go well if y'all really want to get behind us we can buy that that chooch that's just out in the middle of it's nowhere true. it's true and we could do crazy things with it the chooch car and then we could turn it into an airbnb it only costs what like six million dollars like we can get <laughs> well there. no it's like four hundred and fifty thousand for all of them that's so much more achievable that is it's really we See, can do it we just need four hundred and fifty thousand of you to give us one dollar. That's nothing. Well, we will actually need more than that. We'll need closer to a million because we're gonna have to renovate it after. Because right now it's just filled with spiders. So, <laughs> so many spiders and other. We spiders. gotta, we gotta, we gotta make it something nice. But maybe we'll make that train a giant hot dog that you can buy as an Airbnb, a circus themed Airbnb. Wouldn't that be fun? We don't know. Oh man! But only if you guys get on the Patreon. It's true. And in the meantime, we're gonna give you a lot of fun stuff. Um, a lot of like, you know, candy tasting stuff like what watching the greatest showman and commentating mm-hmm. on it as we go mm-hmm. and a lot more stuff in, in the pipeline. It's true. It's true. Early eps sometimes. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're going to, you're they're going to be treats, treats, little treats here little and there. Little treats like the one that we had to eat, oh, which God. How are you by feeling? the end of it did not feel like <laughs> treats. That day I felt so weird. Oh. I've, I have, don't think I've had that much sugar since I was like eight. Oh. And so I really felt odd. The whole rest of the day. I felt bad for a long time. <laughs> I felt bad for a really yeah, long time. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was bad. And like again, like I didn't eat the taffy, you know, like that was just in my mouth. Oh, um, God. But it was still so much just like sugar coming in. Like it was It was still in your saliva in that Oh enough. yeah. Oh my oh. spit was like sweet and weird. Um, I felt so guilty, actually. I was like, this is the a polar opposite of what you want to eat. <laughs> yes, you, that is true. But, you know, as a performer myself, you know, you you got to you got to do you got to give the people what they want. And as soon as Krista said, I dare you to eat, or like you should, <laughs> I was like, well, now I have to, because now the audience uh, know did, if they didn't know before. Now they know they need to see me eat <laughs> or see how many of those taffies I can get in my mouth. So yeah, like, well. special, special thanks to Krista for being there. And in rewatching it, it was worth it. <laughs> it was worth it to rewatch. It was it worth was it. Good. Yeah. Good footage. Oh, man. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for listening. Thank you. I will put some of these images up on our Instagram, any of them that we chatted about, and then definitely mm-hmm. some of these links uh, from these specials I'll put in our show notes. Oh, yeah. The one to the, like, Clown College questionnaire is pretty interesting. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So you can check any of those out um, on our Instagram, which is at circus.stories. Check it. If you have any fun circus facts or fun circus stories of your own that you want to share, please feel mm-hmm. free to send those Please. to circus stories podcast at gmail.com um we would love to hear and feel free to send fan art letters and anything. literally anything you yeah. want to share with us please send yeah. it our way that's semi-appropriate you know what i mean yeah yeah um, yeah keep it yeah. appropriate <laughs> Um, and definitely rate and subscribe. That definitely helps. Tell your friends. Um, and most importantly, more important than anything else, check your boilers. Come on, check those boilers. 
is. It's getting warmer. Safety first. They should be turned down. So Turn them off, probably. Yeah, probably turn them off at this point. But but a key thing, if we get a random chilly night, because that's been happening. You got to check them. Before you put them back on, you got to check them. Check them. Check them. It's Who knows? It's like, important. you know what happens when you don't drive your car for forever and then your car gets hiccups? You don't want your boiler to hiccup. <laughs> Little hiccups. So just check it. Oh, man. So be safe out there. Take care of each other. And we'll see you down the road, friends. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye. <laughs> <Bye-bye. laughs> oh, <Uh-oh>, bye-bye. <laughs> oh, I missed that. That's for sure. <laughs>